no, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Senator McCarthy. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, if I could uh, take you to the issues around Indigenous Australians Health Programme. Uh, there are two important programs that I'd like to examine a little bit more in detail with you, um, Dr Southern. And <clears throat> that's uh, around the programs to do with the um, Northern Territory AIDS and Hepatitis Council and the Queensland AIDS Council. <clears throat> so, Minister, can you uh, detail the reasoning and justification for the defunding of both these services? Well, first of all, I'll just get some clarification uh, around that question, mm. whether in fact they've been defunded or not. Perhaps you can give us an update. Um, <clears throat> yes, they have. Yeah. Uh, oh, their funding um, uh, terminates at the end of this financial year, at the end of June 2017. Sorry, I'm having trouble Sorry. hearing you. <laughs> Sorry, their, their funding um, terminates at the end of June 2017, so yes. Uh, okay, can you explain when, in particular, the Queensland organisation has been funded for 21 years, uh, what the reasons are behind the defunding of uh, both the Northern Territory and Queensland services? Mm, sure. I'll call on my colleague um, to assist. Sure. Bobby Campbell, First Assistant Secretary, uh, Di Indigenous Health Division of the Commonwealth Department of Health. Um, Senator, in 2015, um, the department conducted a review of all Commonwealth funding in sexual health across uh, the nation. Uh, we had uh, three specific jurisdictions, New South Wales, Queensland and the Northern Territory, which were the remaining states where Commonwealth funding was provided for sexual health services, which, um, as you may know, is a constitutional responsibility of the states and territories. Uh, the review essentially looked at uh, various things. It looked at progress reports. Uh, it looked at um, outcomes and evidence. Uh, and. Uh, Ultimately, the review found very limited evidence of outcomes, given that the rates of STI and BBV are ever increasing. Um, we, uh, under, uh, we've notified the, uh, the uh, uh, organisations. Uh, New South Wales was the first to be notified, uh, and their uh, funding ceased uh, last financial year. Uh, and uh, this year, Queensland and the Northern Territory were notified. Uh, of uh, the intention to cease funding and for them to seek alternate sources of funding uh, and their funding will expire 30 June uh, this year. So when you suggest that they need to seek alternate funding, where are you proposing that they go? Uh, the states and territories. Our understanding is um, that both the Queensland AIDS Council and the Northern Territory um, uh, AIDS Council uh, have been in discussions with their states' uh, health uh, organisations uh, we understand that, um, particularly in, in, in Queensland, um, that Queensland Health, uh, as an announcement yesterday, uh, has looked at additional funding for sexual health uh, in Queensland State. Uh, we also um, uh, understand that they're talking to uh, Quake, uh, the Queensland uh, Aboriginal Islander Health Organisation, and um, Quake are, provide, uh, are also seeking additional support from the state government to continue providing uh, the program to spirits. Now, we're aware that uh, the department is undergoing a desktop evaluation of these programs. Uh, Ms Campbell, can you uh, explain in detail what that involves? Uh, it wasn't actually... I, I think the, um, the confusion is that... Um, the understanding was that we were conducting a desktop evaluation of uh, specific... Uh, programs. In fact, we conducted an evaluation of all Commonwealth funding in this space, in the space of sexual health. Uh, the programs themselves, uh, sorry, the, the organisations themselves were also uh, reviewed as part of that overall evaluation of the funding. Uh, and those specific programs uh, were, were reviewed in the sense that we looked at progress reports, uh, we consulted with our state and territory counterparts in, juris in the jurisdictions, we have offices, uh, to, in order to understand essentially the impact of the programs. And um, we also looked at the available evidence that we have in front of us um, in terms of the rates of STI and BBV ever increasing and concluded that there was really limited evidence that these programs, which we've been funding for, as you say, um, decades now, have really had any impact. So we're 
we, we came to the conclusion that we need a national strategic approach uh, in, in this space and we really need to look at um, targeting uh, BBV and STI more specifically and looking at essentially how we can have better traction and better inroads in ultimately reducing the rates of BBV and STI. I'm just trying to understand though if, you're, if you've had an evaluation that says you're going to withdraw from uh, these jurisdictions and yet you're also saying that there needs to be a national approach. It doesn't seem to marry up when you understand that these rates of uh, sexually transmitted diseases are increasing at phenomenal rates. Is that correct? So, am I understanding that correctly? Well, it is a, a shared responsibility um, and it's not just a responsibility of the Commonwealth, it's a responsibility of the states and territories also. But, but, excuse me, sorry, yeah. Ms Campbell, but if you're if the Commonwealth is removing complete responsibility from Queensland and the Northern Territory, that's not a shared approach. Is that correct? We're actually not removing complete responsibility from those states. What we're doing is looking at a national, consistent, focused, strategic approach across all jurisdictions, not just Queensland to Northern Territory. So, so how, how are you doing that? Uh, we're working with, and I might ask and my colleague uh, um, from... What, what I'm trying to understand is how, you, how you're doing that if these two organisations uh, will no doubt, with no funding, not be able to uh, continue in their capacity to assist in the reduction of these concerns with STIs and also issues uh, that, that matter to the LGBTIQ community. I guess uh, the, the, the national strategy that we're looking at developing will go into those areas. Um, we will be talking to organisations, and we currently are talking to an organisation, SAMRI, to really look at um, new innovative ways of how we can tackle this issue, because doing the same over and over obviously isn't having the same so, so you will fund the Queensland and Northern Territory organisations? I'm just trying to understand what that yeah. relationship's going to be when you say there is going to be a national approach. I mean, well, ha how can you reassure these two organisations in particular uh, who are feeling that come the end of June, mm -hmm. that's it for them. We will be calling um, these organisations uh, and discussing with these organisations uh, once we have an, a strategy um, and a direction to talk to them about how they can help um, and how they can impact in this space. Uh, all organisations are always open to providing us with uh, but you, proposals. But you're not going to do it with funding, are you? Is that, well, is that what you're saying? We, are, we do have funding. We actually have funding that we've committed over the next um, four or five years in this space. We're looking at innovative projects and innovative grants uh, in order to really target these areas that we really need to focus on. So it is, it is not that we are completely pulling out, it is that we're looking at a different way of doing something so that we can have maximum impact. And these organisations are always welcome to provide proposals. We understand that their funding is ceasing on the 30th um, and they are welcome to provide a proposal which provides us with some evidence, with NKPIs, with an evaluation strategy. Um, and a proposal that essentially will address uh, where we really need to go in this space. Ms Campbell, uh, can I just um, ask a couple of follow-up questions about your evidence? Um, you indicated that you have set aside an amount of money to pursue sexual health. Um, what is that amount of money? Uh, we have committed... $15 million, um, and that commitment's from 13, 14, and that's from the Indigenous Australians Health Program. And I'll hand over to my colleague, um, Ms Appleyard, also to talk about sort of the broader um, population-based uh, funding. But um, from 16, uh, sorry, from six, so it's $15 million, and from... From 16, 17, 16, 17. Um, out to 2018, 19, it's... $11.8 million. $11.8 from 16, 17. And that was previously the funding that was allocated to uh, these state-based organisations, or at least the funding that was previously allocated to state-based organisations was drawn from that pool. That's correct, yes. And you're now mm -hmm. seeking to provide the funding on different terms yes. to different yeah. providers? Yes, to, I think it's, uh, as Ms Campbell was saying, it's um, We've been funding programs for a long period of time. We're still seeing the infection rates increasing and increasing quite dramatically. What can we do to better target the funds that we've got um, for the outcomes that we're looking at? And finally, can I just clarify, 
You said earlier that you'd done a desktop review of the whole suite of investments. Have you done any specific evaluation of the programs that are, you are defunding? Uh, we, as part of the, um, the commitments that we've made to these organisations, no, we haven't, and that's the issue. We, we actually need to sort of look at this from a national perspective um, and, and do a full, uh, well, <coughs> in order to um, do an evaluation, we would have needed to have some contractual commitments um, within the contracts that we've got with current organisations, and we didn't have those uh, within those contracts. And so what we now are doing essentially is looking at it from a national strategic approach um, and <coughs> looking at how we can best target our funds on a national basis as opposed to a state and territory um, historical funding basis. Mm. So uh, did you ask the state-based organisations whether they would be willing to partner with you in an evaluation of the programs? I'd have to take that on notice. I'm, I'm not aware. So you've defunded them without a specific evaluation of the programs? No, we didn't. You didn't ask? No, we didn't ask. Didn't ask, didn't do an evaluation, defunded. Okay. So, so basically what you're saying to the committee is that uh, you acknowledge that uh, rates of STI are increasing at a phenomenal rate. You want to have a national program. You haven't evaluated uh, the current situation with the Queensland and Northern Territory centres, nor offered them an opportunity. So how is that going to close the gap in health for Indigenous Australians in particular when you've made a decision based what it appears uh, without any thorough thought? Just to clarify, we did look at progress reports. As part of their contractual obligations, they're required to provide us with progress reports. The progress reports did not provide us with any evidence or outcomes uh, to sustain um, funding. The, the, the evidence is clear that increasing rates of STI BBV uh, are, are ongoing and, and the organisations... Um, oh, so, so you're saying they weren't performing, is that correct? Is that what you mean? According you to the progress reports, they were not performing. So you're saying the Queensland Centre and the Northern Territory Centre were just not up to, to scratch on this? I think it's important for the committee to understand, yep. that's all, so as really, to how you got to this yeah. decision. So I, what we were looking at were the outcomes that they were achieving, the health outcomes they were achieving for the investment that the Commonwealth was making. And, I, and on that basis, um, felt that um, we needed to better target the funding to, to other mechanisms, um, rather than continuing to fund think, uh, initiatives that did not seem to be having the sorts of impacts that we were looking for. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you. 